All right, so free body diagrams, which are the topic of lesson number three in this unit, are tools. Uh, you know, a free body diagram is a tool um, for helping us to visualize and analyze force problems. Because Newton's second law primarily deals with the unbalanced force, or the overall force that's acting on an object. When we have situations where we have multiple forces that are acting on an object, it often can make a lot of sense and is much, much more helpful to add up all of those forces to actually analyze and see what's acting on an object. And that's what the free body diagram does for us. Now, many physics teachers and professors will say that you must include a free body diagram with your solution. And some will either deduct marks from your solution or will um, have marks set aside for the use of a free body diagram. And I think the reason for that is because um, a lot of physics educators really, really understand the power in free body diagrams and how useful they are in Newtonian mechanics. So that's what this lesson is going to um, talk about is, is free body diagrams, how to set them up, how to draw them, and how to use them in problems. So here's the situation below. We have a horse and it's being pulled by a carriage. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to draw a free body diagram of the carriage in this, in this case. Because a free body diagram only deals with one body in a problem. And so in this problem, we could draw a free body diagram of the horse. We could draw a free body diagram of the carriage. We could draw one of the, a free body diagram of one of the carriage wheels. But for the purposes of this question, let's draw a free body diagram of the carriage. So the way that it starts is that you know we either draw a box or we draw a dot. My free body diagrams always include um, a box um, or sometimes a circle. And from this box, we're going to draw the forces that are acting. So certainly um, there is a horse that is pulling this box in a certain direction. And so we say that this is the force of the horse, of course. We also know that the carriage is, of course, not floating off into the atmosphere, so it's being held securely, planted to the ground by gravity. The ground, however, is also supplying a force in the upwards direction, and that would be the force um, here, F ground. And we could say, well, depending on the situation, um, we'd certainly have friction as a force that's present. Um, and that could be friction maybe from the axles in the, you know, of the wheel or maybe friction from the ground. Um, and, of course, we could add in, um, you know, and make those two distinct things. Force of the wheels, maybe the axles, and then we'd also have some force of friction from the ground. And so this would be a representative sample of what's going on in a free body diagram. Most of the time, the problems that you're going to be solving are going to explain what forces are present and which ones they want you to include in the free body diagram. But what does all this mean? Well, we know from Newton's second law that F equals ma, but that F is not just um, one of the forces, it's all of the forces. So if there's more than one force acting on an object in a free body diagram, we know that F net is equal to the sum of all forces acting on the object. Okay. So here's an example. Two children pulling a toy. One with a force of 2 newtons east and the other with a force of 1.5 Newton's west. What is the net force acting on the, tro uh, on the toy? Now in this case, um, we don't really, we're not talking about gravity, we're not talking about um, the force being placed on a table or on a surface, so really our free body diagram is 
um, in indicating that, that there are two forces. One is 2 newtons east, and the other is 1.5 newtons west. And we want to know the net force. <clears throat> so here, F net is equal to the sum of the forces, which is 2 newtons east plus 1.5 newtons west. But in our sign convention, of course, west is the negative direction. So we'd say 2.0 minus 1.5. And we end up with 0 0.5. So F net is 0 0.5 newtons east. Um, it should be said that in this example, um, we should note that the forces pulling in opposite directions were unequal. And that led to an overall net force. If the forces had been the same, they would have, of course, canceled out. The toy wouldn't have moved. Um, and so since the forces are unbalanced, that causes the toy to accelerate. All right, so here we go. Let's find the acceleration of this toy. It has a mass of 50 grams. So here was F net. We just found that in that problem, 0 0.5 newtons east. We know that the mass is 50 grams. We want to use SI units, so let's convert that right away, 0 0.05 kilograms. And F equals MA. So if we rearrange this equation for A, and we divide 0 0.5 newtons east divided by 0 0.05 kilograms, we end up with 10 meters per second squared in the east direction. You'll notice that the mass, of course, does not change the direction. So if the force was directed east, the acceleration is also directed east. So the acceleration of this toy is 10 meters per second squared in the east direction. So here's a couple different free body diagrams. And we've got some forces in the vertical direction and some in the horizontal direction. So for the first one, let's look at the sum of the forces in the y direction. Of course, we have two newtons up, two newtons down, so those are going to cancel out, and we just get zero newtons in that direction. What about in the x direction? We get six newtons east, three newtons west, so of course that would give us six, excuse me, three newtons to the east. Here we have one newton up, one newton down, so they would cancel out. And here we'd have two newtons east plus five newtons east plus two newtons west, which if we do some canceling gives us five newtons east. So this in general is kind of how we're going to do these things. Um, in this question, here's example four. A race car can accelerate from 97 meters from rest to 97 meters per second in 6.2 seconds. If the car has a mass of 800 kilograms and its engine generates a driving force of 1600 newtons forward, find the force of friction on the car. All right, so here's what we have. V1 is equal to zero. It goes from zero to rest. Uh, sorry, from rest to 97 meters per second. Time is 6.2 seconds. So we got all kinds of kinematics um, information. Maybe we're going to use that to find acceleration, exactly. The mass is 800 kilograms, and the force of the engine is 16,000 newtons forward. So what's the force of friction on the car? Well, again, what we're going to do is multi-steps. We're going to use kinematics to find the acceleration, and then we're going to use those accelerations to analyze the force. So let's start with this. We're going to, let's, we'll just take equation number one, because it's probably the simplest to use. Sub in our numbers that we have from the problem. Rearrange and solve. We get 15.6 meters per second squared forward. Now, let's take that acceleration, um, but before we do that, we have to analyze the forces. Because we're only talking about one direction. We're only talking about either forwards or backwards. We're not going to include gravity and um, any forces in, in the vertical direction because they're not going to help us. 
So our free body diagram in this case would look something like this. 16,000 newtons forward, and the force of friction obviously acting in the opposite direction to kind of slow us down a little bit. We know that F net is equal to MA. So we can now write F net explicitly as 16,000 in one direction minus the force of friction because it's in the other direction. And that's equal to 800 kilograms, which is the mass of the car, times 15.6 meters per second. And what we find by simplifying is that the force of friction is equal to 10,880 newtons. Uh, it's interesting to note if you know if we had just used the force of the engine times the um, equals m a um, and used the mass of the car to find the acceleration, that would have been the acceleration but without friction. And so yeah, we could have got got an acceleration by using just f equals m a, but of course that's incorrect because that wouldn't have allowed us to find the force of friction that was acting on the car.